While you may have learned calculus or other advanced topics in other classes, what math concepts are needed in AP Physics C? Before learning physics, it's vital that we understand the mathematics behind equations and formulas that we write. While some of you may have taken calculus and other math classes in the past or are taking them right now, not all topics learned in your math classes are necessary for AP Physics C and vice versa. With that, let's run through a rapid review of some important math concepts needed for AP Physics C. Let's start with the C in AP Physics C, calculus, but namely derivatives and integrals. Most simply, the derivative of a function measures the function's rate of change with respect to a variable, and is notated like this. To take a derivative of a function, say the derivative of x cubed with respect to x, use the power rule. The exponent power becomes a coefficient, and the exponent decreases by 1. Here, the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is equal to 3 times x squared, which actually represents a slope or rate of change of the x cubed graph at any point x. Integrals, in contrast, are the opposite of the derivative. Just as adding by 2 then subtracting by 2 leaves a number as it was, taking the derivative of a function then integrating it will leave it unchanged. Integrals measure the accumulation of a function over some variable, which is notated like this. To take the integral of a function, like x cubed, do the reverse of the derivative power rule. First, add 1 to the exponent, then use the reciprocal of this new exponent as the coefficient. For our example, the integral of x cubed will become 1 fourth times x to the fourth plus a constant c. This integration constant c comes from the fact that undoing this answer or taking the derivative of a constant doesn't change the original answer. So the constant of the integrated function could have been anything, unless they give you an initial condition in the problem. In addition, one weird integral that is extremely useful is the integral of 1 over x, which equals the natural log of x plus a constant. The derivation is a bit tricky, but it's a very easy one to memorize and is very common in AP Physics C. With this basic calculus crash course, another common math topic used in AP Physics C is vectors. While we learned in AP Physics 1 that vectors have both magnitude and direction, we can show this idea through either brackets or unit vector notation, where each component, x, y, or z, is written in between commas and brackets or attached to the unit vectors i hat, j hat, or k hat, respectively. To write these vectors as variables for equations, just add an arrow on top of the letter of choice. While adding and subtracting vectors simply entails adding or subtracting each component together, there's actually two ways to find the product between vectors. The dot product, written like this, turns vectors into a scalar. To dot product two vectors, add together the products of each component of the two vectors. In contrast, the cross product of two vectors finds a vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to both of them. While there's many ways to cross two vectors, in three dimensions, I like to write our unit vectors i, j, k, the first vector, then the second vector, then copy the first two columns to the right side. From there, sum up the products of these rightward diagonals, then subtract all of these leftward diagonals, making sure to multiply by the unit vectors to keep track of your components. The direction of the cross product of two vectors can be found using the right-hand rule pointing your right index finger in the first vector's direction, middle finger in the second direction, with your thumb pointing in the direction of the cross product. Finally, one decently common concept that is rarely covered in math classes is known as small angle approximations. In certain units, especially simple harmonic motion, physics approximates things when quantities get super small. Specifically, when angles are very small, usually written in problems like this, there are a couple cool tricks we can use to simplify problems. Geometrically, small angles make extremely thin isosceles triangles like this one. While we would usually use trigonometry to solve for lengths of this triangle, here we can actually approximate this small leg of the triangle to be roughly the arc of this thin circle slice, which has a length of r times theta. This will be useful in analyzing two moments in time or space very close to one another. Similarly, the trigonometric functions can be simplified for small angles as well. These formulas come from a calculus concept known as Maclaurin or Taylor series, but actually can be seen graphically as well. For small angles theta, sine theta is approximated as simply theta, cosine to be 1 minus half theta squared, and tangent to be theta as well. While this approximation idea can be applied to different quantities like length too, small angle approximations will come in handy in the upcoming units of AP Physics C. With that, you can feel good that you just finished reviewing the most important math concepts needed before diving into AP Physics C.